In this video, I'm going to give you 22 tips to help you get the most out of your Insta360 ONE R. Any app tips that I give are based around using iOS, so if you're using Android then these may differ. So let's get straight to it. To avoid any accidental pushes on the touch screen, you can lock the touch screen by using this icon in the settings menu. To unlock the screen, you then swipe up on the screen when prompted. After locking the touch screen, you can still change the camera's shooting modes by using the power button. When your touch screen is unlocked, you can quickly change your shooting mode by swiping up from the bottom of the screen. Now this tip is talked about a lot and there's even a tutorial on the Insta360 ONE R app, but I can't stress how important it is, and that's when you mount the Insta360 ONE R with the 360 module on a selfie stick, it must be dead straight. If it's not straight, then you risk seeing it in your shot. The invisible selfie stick just won't be invisible. Never mount the camera at an angle unless you're using the one inch module or the 4K module. And when you're using the 360 module and you've mounted it straight, remember to keep checking and double check that it's straight because otherwise you'll kick yourself later when you can see the stick in your shot. If the camera freezes, you can hold down the on button for 20 seconds to reset it. When assembling the 1R, make sure the battery buckle snaps into place because this indicates that it's locked. And if you're using the 1R underwater, Water, then you must use the mounting bracket because this pulls all the modules together and ensures that they're watertight. Caring for your camera is even more imperative with the One R. We all know that we've got to look after our lenses, but because the One R is a modular system, there are a lot more connections that are exposed that need to be kept clean and dry. A quick visual inspection will usually be enough before and after filming, but if you've been filming around dirt, dust or sand, then it's well worth taking some canned air with you just as an extra precaution. And if you've been filming underwater, then before you disassemble the camera, stand the camera somewhere to dry out thoroughly before you disassemble it to avoid any water getting on any of the connections. The camera does come with a dual lens protector, which on the face of it seems pretty good, but when you take it out of a bag or you take the camera out of your pocket, the lens protector quite easily gets caught and gets pulled off and then you can end up scratching your lenses. To prevent this happening and for added protection, I use an additional camera pouch, and I use this pouch. Yes, it's a GoPro Max pouch. Come on Insta360, we need a better solution and it needs to be included with the camera. And I haven't even mentioned where am I meant to store the 4K module when I'm not using it. The Micro SD cards are always fiddly to get in and out of these cameras, particularly if you have big fat thumbs like I've got. One really useful thing with the One R is that you can use the small camera door that's attached to the camera to insert and eject the Micro SD cards. Did you know that with the One R you can program up to four additional preset shooting modes, including manual adjustments for each mode? Select the camera icon in the bottom left hand corner and then select the third icon down which is your program icon. The slot holder for P0 is preset to star lapse and can't be changed. If you scroll up you'll see four additional slot holders and when you select replace it will store the existing camera settings in this slot. So for example if I set camera and then change the setting to 4K I then go to the program menu I press replace and then it will update the slot holder with those 4K settings. When monitoring the image on the touch screen, if you want to switch quickly between the front and the rear camera just for monitoring purposes, then you double tap on the screen and then simply double tap again to go back to the other camera. You can have even more fun with the Insta360 ONE R by experimenting with the AI functions under the Shot Lab tab in the app. You can easily shoot and edit shots like this and the app shows you mini tutorials for each shot. To save the battery life on your camera, you can turn off the LCD screen with a quick push of the on button. Press it again quickly to make it come back to life. You can charge the One R up by using a portable power bank, which is really handy for charging the camera on the go. And if you know you're definitely going to reframe your shot and the portable power bank won't be seen, then you can charge your camera whilst you're recording. For long time lapse shots beyond an hour, the power bank is essential but be careful because the camera may get too hot. To avoid overheating, you can take the battery off and power the camera with just the power bank, but then you lose the mounting bracket, so you've got no way of mounting the camera, and then all the components aren't held tightly together. But if you've got a 3D printer, then maybe you'll come up with a solution. Let me know in the comments below. To get the most out of your camera, you can shoot in manual mode and have more control over your images. You can adjust exposure, shutter, and white balance. And when shooting video, you can also shoot in log mode, which will give you maximum dynamic range. This will create a flat image and you will need to apply some sort of LUT in your editing software to bring the image to life. An extra bonus tip here, when making manual adjustments to the shutter for example, instead of scrolling through the settings, if you double tap on the screen once, either above or below, 
it will open up or close the shutter one increment. I found this way of making the adjustments a lot smoother than scrolling through on such a tiny screen. The Insta360 1R watermark appears at the bottom of your videos by default, but you can switch it off by going to settings in your app and then going down to watermark and selecting off. If you want to take a selfie with the 1R, you can set a self timer to give yourself longer to get into position. When you're in photo mode, you click on the bottom right hand corner of the screen and then change the timer from three to 15 seconds and then click the tick icon. The prompt sound that they use on the 1R is hideous. Why? Why Insta360? Awful. But you can turn that off here in the settings menu on the camera. So go and do that straight away before it drives you absolutely crazy. While you're filming a video, if there's a certain part that you're filming that you know that you'll want to come back to in the edit, you can mark it using the flag icon. Now when you play the clip back in the app, you'll see the exact point that you marked it on the timeline so you'll be able to go straight to it. Also when you're playing your clips back, you can mark entire clips as your favourites by selecting the star icon. Any clips that you mark as your favourites by using the star icon can then be found in your favourites folder which is on the albums page in the app. You can use quick capture on the 1R by selecting this icon in the camera settings. When quick capture is selected it means that when your camera is off you can press the record button once and then the camera will turn on and start recording straight away. The camera will remember the last video mode that you use. So if you use HDR video then it will start recording in HDR video mode. If you use standard video Video, it will start recording in standard video mode. An important thing to note here is that if you press the record button quickly then the camera will turn on but it won't start recording so you have to hold on to the record button for around about two seconds or until the blue light comes on and then the camera will turn on and it will start recording. Now this doesn't make sense to me because if this was to prevent the camera turning on accidentally then it wouldn't turn on at all if you did a quick button push but maybe this will be addressed in a future firmware update. I don't know, I have contacted Insta360 about it, so I'll let you know in the comments what they say. You can also use your voice to control the 1R by selecting this icon in the camera menu. You can use the following commands, start recording, stop recording, take a photo, mark it, or power down. Now this is a feature that at some point you will want to use and it's worth knowing that that feature is there. But at the moment it's a bit buggy and doesn't work properly. It's not very sensitive, you have to shout at the screen. Sometimes you, you can only shout at one side of the camera. You have to put the camera really close and some of the commands just don't work. So it's a tip worth knowing, but hopefully it will improve with future updates. On the back end of that tip, this leads me naturally to my final tip. And my final tip is around the negativity that's on the Facebook groups about cameras being released before they work perfectly. And the Insta360 1R is no exception to this. It does have some flaws, it does need certain updates. So my final tip is to simply contact Insta360 and give them your feedback. Engage in a conversation with them, don't just complain. Give them constructive feedback and tell them what's not working. It's only with our feedback that they can start addressing and resolving these issues with future updates. I found the best way to contact Insta360 is via email and to include a short video of the problem that you're having which you can either attach to your email or you can upload on a private link on YouTube. So that's it. Please give this video a thumbs up if you found these tips useful. Hit the subscribe button and click the bell so you're told straight away when I upload more 360 tips, tutorials and reviews. Let me know in the comments if you have any tips you want to share and I'll see you on the next video.